Welcome back to the laundry room. This is my dad's laundry room. His dryer apparently isn't heating up anymore. There's there's two things in there. I think there's a, a thermal fuse and then there's a... I'll, I'll have to go back and look it up. But there's, there's a couple components that frequently or commonly go bad in these dryers. My dryer at the house has had this problem before, so I'm going to get in here and poke around and throw some parts of this and see if I can't get it to work again. But it's, it runs and turns on everything, just doesn't generate any heat. This is a Whirlpool. Uh, and then it is a model LER8648LG1. I'm not sure that really helps anyone. I'm not sure why the numbers are so spastic with this. It's hard to believe they make thousands or you know dozens of different models of these things. But you'd think they'd be the same, but but when you try to look up parts, it's pretty difficult. So hopefully the parts I ordered are right. We'll find out. We're going to take the back off of this. It has quarter inch. So as I understand it, there's there's two different or three different things that could go wrong here, and we could have a break in the the inside of here is a bunch of uh, wire for like a heating element, like a toaster oven. And then there's a, a thermal fuse, and there's also some sort of a thermostat. I believe that's that's this down here. The thermal fuse should have continuity, I believe. If not, it's broken. The the thermistor, the thermostat, we should be able to put my hand on it. And then the body heat will increase the resistance. It's sort of a, a temperature correlated thermostat. And, and down here is the main power feed for the for the resist for the heating element in there and that is uh, needs to have continuity also otherwise it'd be a broken wire in there so let me get the multimeter continuity there there and I've got no continuity at the thermal break up here so this is what that, I think it's that fuse. It, we can see that we don't have any continuity here. But then when I get the new one, you can hear I do have continuity. So this is most likely the bad part. We're going to go ahead and reassemble it and see if we can get any heat out of it. to me in there. That sucker's working. Alright. So the dryer is back together. It's working. Everything is nice and warm in here. But even though I'm done and I've got it put back together, I, I took a minute to try to assess my thoughts and come back and figure out why this failed. What, what was the number one cause of this uh, thermal fuse to blow? And I've seen wires burn up, I've seen other things get clogged and whatnot, so... <laughs> I checked the, the vent just to see, make sure that there's no obstruction. And look at this, look at this amount of lint that was in this lint trap. It just absolutely was chock full. And that undoubtedly, undoubtedly was holding up the airflow. And I, I wish I would have taken a minute to show you the rest of it. But there's a fan that blows air through the dryer, across the coils and back through, and the minute that you impede that airflow, then the coils are going to get hot, it's going to get over temp, blow that thermal fuse. Because my father wasn't cleaning the lint dryer, and this is, hopefully he doesn't get angry with me for showing this, but, <laughs> but I probably am going to save him 20 bucks a month or more on dryer electricity, because it doesn't have to try to push all the air through here, and the clothes are going to dry way 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 faster so his I think his problem here was just maintenance he wasn't cleaning the lint trap as frequently nearly as frequently as he should have been and that you know in turn ended up causing that thermal fuse to break so that's it hopefully this is helpful to somebody I hope you guys are having a good week thanks for watching